So welcome to this React mini course. My name is Fernando. And on this one, we will create a tiny application with React. So if you're looking for an easy start uh, to React, you came to the right place. You just need to know a little bit of HTML and basic JavaScript. Okay, so this is what we are going to be building. So it's a tiny, simple application, but still we're going to do a lot. So we mainly need three different components and we need a context to handle all the data that will flow to the three components. So this page, it's like a game and it works. It, the main idea of this one, it was the uh, eight, the magic eight ball, you know, that eight ball that you shake and you get an answer. Well, this is pretty much the same thing. So it's kind of a rip off, let's say, let's say. So we need to ask a question, something like, should, uh, I don't know, I go, which could, sometimes is a, you know, a good question. I'm going to go copy this. I'm going to go next and we move on to the next screen. So we share the data from the first screen to the second screen. We can start over if you wish. All right. So I'm going to go next again. And then if you wanted to, we're going to get a decision. We're going to get an answer. So if I go again, we just get an answer and we are going to be getting a random value from a list of answers. And if we want to decide again, we're going to regenerate the, the answer. Or if we want to start over, we're going to go and start over. We're going to do a little bit of validation, maybe something like if the question is too long. So if I do next, we're going to use toast, right? So we're going to do a lot of things. So it's going to be a tiny project, but it takes a lot of work. And at the end, when we are done, pretty done, we are going to put everything on production. Notice that right here at the top, you get uh, a domain. This is an actual domain. So we're going to deploy to search. Okay, so it's going to be a very tiny and fun project. And all the information, all everything that you do is going to be stored on GitHub. So you can get the code directly from there. All right, so open the IDE and let's begin. So one of the most common questions I get is which IDE you are using. And in this case, I'm going to use the Visual Studio code. Why? Well, it's free. Everyone is using it and it's very easy to use. So why not using this? So how can you get it? Well, you just need to go to the web, type Visual Studio code. And then you can download for Windows or for Mac or for Linux. If, if that's your thing, you can get it as well. Now, what we need uh, as well is going to be Node.js because we will use uh, the NPM, 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 or in this case, MPX to generate a template uh, to start the application. So we are going to really, really use Node.js. Node so if you don't have it installed, you are going to need to install it. So go to the web, uh, type Node.js going to go right here. And then of course it will detect what system you're running and uh, you will get a suggestion, you know, what, which one do you, what would you like to install? So if you install this one or this one, it doesn't matter. Everything's still going to work. So when you click on this one, it will give you the installer. You just need to go through the installation and that's it. Now, if you are running commands and the application, it's telling you something like, you know, command not recognized. What you will need to do is open the terminal. And in the case of this course, I'm going to use the integrated terminal of the IDE. So of course you can go to the CMD. If you use CMD, you can use to the, you can go to the terminal of Mac if you, if you wish or Linux. It's just completely up to you just to keep everything in the same place. I'm going to use the integrated terminal. So you need to go to terminal on the VS code, new terminal, and it will open, uh, uh, you know, the command prompt. So just, just to check, just to double check after you install Node.js that you have the, you know, node installing your system, what you will need to do is node minus V and it will tell you the version. So I'm running the 1610, which is not even the latest and everything is going to work. Maybe I'm going to need to do, do an update, but that's fine. So if you're getting this, it's because you're running node. You're cool. If you're not getting this, it means that you will need to restart the computer. All right. So that's, that's pretty much it. Now, another thing that it's very important is that every video, every section we do on this course, you will get that code for that particular section. And I store everything in branches. So on the installation right here, you get the code for the installation. And for every single video, every single code we do, I'm storing and saving that code. So you don't miss everything. So if you don't want to type whatever I'm going to type uh, to do the application and you just want to watch, that's fine. You just can watch and then go right here and just copy the code, right? You can do that as well. All right. So that's it. So let's begin. Uh, let's begin. Uh, let's open the IDE, the IDE and just start coding. 
Okay, so on this one, we are going to start with everything. So the first thing we need to do is to create an application to install uh, a fresh template of uh, React. So the application is going to be called Decider. So I'm, I'm already inside a directory called Decider. So if I go right here at the top and open the terminal, it's going to say Decider right there. And we are going to install everything right here. Okay, so how can we install it? So if you go to the React, React documentation and go to Docs right here, notice that you will get a lot of information of what you can do. And this is pretty much the whole manual of React. Okay, so uh, on the installation, you get to create a new React app. So this is what we need to do. And notice if you scroll down, it will say npx create React app and then the name of your, uh, your, your application. Now, in our case, I don't need to create the name of my application because it's going to be Decider. And every file I need to put inside is going to be inside of this directory. So right now, I'm going to need to do npx, then create, then react, and then app. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And we just need to put a dot. The dot means that every file that this will create, uh, it will put it inside of the Decider. If we put a name, whatever name, it will create an additional directory inside Decider and then put the files. But, you know, in this case, this is not what I want. I just want this. So I'm going to go. I'm going to press enter. This is going to take just a minute. OK, so after a little while, everything is installed. So I'm going to do clear right here at the bottom and I'm going to bring this down. So, of course, when everything is installed right here in the left side of the screen, you're, you're going to get the information or the direct the structure of the actual project. And this is just really simple. If I go to the source, everything is going to be there. So you will have a lot of files that we are not going to really use. So we are not going to use the app CSS that we have right here. I'm just going to go and delete it. We are not going to use it. Uh, we have the app.js. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to go to here and delete this one. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to keep the index.js. That's an important file. I'm going to delete this one. Oh, I'm going to mistake on this one. Uh, I need to de 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 delete the logo. And then I'm going to go delete this one. And you should do the same, of course. And then I'm going to go and do the setup test. OK, so now we have only two files. We have an app that it's saying something and index.js. So the most important part of the application is the index.js. That's where, the, you know, everything starts. So we have a lot of things that we are not going to really use. So some things we removed. So we are only going to keep the app and then app right here. That's it. So then app, of course, right here, it says a lot of things that, again, we are not going to really use. We are importing a logo that we no longer have and a CSS that we no longer have. So I'm going to go and delete it. So I'm going to go and do it like this. This is the way I like to create components. Open and close. And at the end of the day, we just export default the app. And uh, right here, we are just returning something. So for now, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go and try to get uh, some hello on the screen. That's it. So remember, the index is calling the app. So the app is saying just hello. So if we go to the package.json, it will tell you how to run the project. So the only thing we need to do is npm start. And this one will start a development server. And it will just, you know, create everything, you know, behind the scenes. And it will give you your project. So right now it says something is already running on port 3000 and it's because I'm running the final version on the port and I'm going to use this as a, as a design so we can follow the same thing we are doing here so we can use it as a design and this is the already done project. So since uh, this one is running on the 3000 is going to run this one on a different port. But of course, if you are just running one single app, yours is going to run on the, on the 3000. And notice that we get the hello, right? So, you know, simple as that. So I'm going to go and we still need to do a lot of things. So we get the installation going, but we are going to use fonts and we need to use Bootstrap. And I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go to Bootstrap. And uh, of course, maybe you go to the get started and notice they give you the link to the CDN on the CSS. So I'm going to copy that link. Now, where can we put all this information? Well, right here inside public. We get the index.html. So this is where we need to put it. So I'm going to go here and maybe right there. I'm going to go and say that now we have Bootstrap. So Bootstrap will run in our application. The application right here, the server will rebuild everything and let us uh, use Bootstrap. Same thing with the fonts. So I'm going to need some fonts and they are just very important for us. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and select the Roboto font. And it is maybe, oh, I already have them right here. And I'm going to start over. And this is a, from a previous section, a previous project. So I'm going to select them again. I'm going to go to Roboto. And I need to select the light one. And you should do the same. And maybe, uh, you know, medium and then bold. Why not? And I need another font, a different font. And I'm going to go right here at the top, say browse fonts. And the one I need is going to be the righteous. This one. And it's only, uh, it's a display font. So it's only a single font. So once we get everything, I'm just going to copy, uh, uh, copy all and just paste it right here. And that's it. Now, whenever we want to use it, use it, we're going to use this. Now, one thing we are not going to do on this course is to use CSS. We are not going to type a lot of CSS because it takes time and it's just CSS. And remember, this is a free course. It can only take two hours. That's the rule. So, okay. So we are not going to do CSS, but notice on the, on the, on the video, you have a download for a SIP that says assets, and that's going to be the CSS we are going to use for this application. So download the SIP and put the assets inside the source directory. I'm going to do just that. Okay, so it's done. Uh, notice that I get an assets right here. It's a pretty simple, you know, just a pretty simple CSS file. Very short. We don't need to do a lot. And, uh, and that's it. We're going to use this CSS, of course. Now, let me close this one. We are not going to use this one anymore. So the, the here is where, where we uh, need to start. The app.js is going to be like the main container that will contain pretty much the whole application. And all the other components that we see uh, are going to be a children of the app component. So let me show you how it works on the final version. I'm going to go there. I'm going to reload the application just so we can start. So when the application starts, we're going to show the first component. This is going to be the initial component. And when we ask something, saying something like, are you sure? Then it's going to give us the option to move forward. Only when we type something, we are going to add a little bit of validation, of course. So when I do next, of course, it's going to say the question is too long. Maybe I'm going to make it, you know, something like that. Are you in something? And then it will let us move forward, right? So once we are done, we will remember, we need to remember because this component is a different component. So that whatever data the user is going to enter, we need to store it in some place. So we're going to use the context on that one. Don't worry if you don't know how to use it, we, you're going to do it right here with me. So don't worry. So when we show this component, we need to decide if we want to go back or we want to move forward. If we ask a new question, we just restart the whole thing. So again, I'm going to say next, we get the buttons. And when we decided, we're going to go to the third component, which is the results component. And in this one, we will pick or random, uh, randomly generate an answer, which is in this case, ask a friend. So we can uh, generate the, uh, the answer uh, again. So we're going to get a different answer every time we click the button. That's one of the functions we need to create. And if we want to start over, it's like wiping all the data that we store behind the scenes and we go back to the beginning. So this is what we need to do. And this is what we have right now. So we need to do a lot of work. So, okay, I'm going to go back to the app. And the app, again, it's like the main, like the initial or brain of the, uh, of the whole operation. So we have an asset, uh, CSS right now. So if we import it right here, since all the children's are going to be, you know, inside of the app, they will get the style. So the way we do it is by importing dot forward slash assets and then app and then CSS. Oh, CSS. So now the CSS will be part of the component. So notice that the font type is already changing there. All right. So what else do we need to do? Well, uh, I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to say that this one is going to be the class of container. So class name and container. So remember on Re with React, we don't use the keyword class. That is a reserved keyword. We use class name and behind the scenes, this will be translated to class. So if I go, everything is centered, just like this application. So, the, you know, now we know that, it's, that the styles are just kicking in. Okay, so what do we need? Remember, we need three different components. This one, the next screen and the results screen. So what we do, we need to create components. So, and the way we do it is by creating a directory called components and we put everything inside. So remember, we just need three for now. So I'm going to go and say that we are going to create our initial component. So initial.js. I'm going to go to the other one and it's going to be the confirm, which is the second one. And then the, uh, the final one is going to be the results. 
results.js. All right, so you know, we just get three co empty components. So we just need to create something in order to show something. So I'm going to say const, and then I'm going to say const, and then initial. And then I'm just going to open and close the function just like this. And remember, at the end of the day, this one needs to return something. This file needs to return something. So what we do is export default and the name of the component. All right. So remember again, uh, the function needs to, ret to return uh, return some content. So return, open and close. And for now, since we don't have anything, I'm just going to say the name uh, uh, the name of the component, which is in this case initial. And I'm going to go and do the all the same with the other ones. And you know, I made a mistake. I'm doing this on the confirm. So you know what? I'm going to go right here to initial paste it right there. And this one is going to be the confirm. And I'm going to go and do it like that. And this one is going to be confirm. I'm going to copy this, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to go to results. And this one is going to be results. And actually, you know, it should be result because we don't have many results. So I'm going to go and just rename it just in case. So it should be result. All right. So this one is result and then result all over the place. So now we have three dumb components. They don't do much. But the main trick right now is that we need a way to show just the first component. And then we need a way to change to the second component and then the third component. And we need to handle all of this uh, from the app.js. So if we want to show these three components within the app, we need to import them. So, okay. So I'm going to go and say that we need to import the initial. And I'm going to do it just like this. Initial. And this one is confirm components and initial. I'm going to go and import the confirm. And it's going to be from components and confirm. And then we need the other one, which is uh, results or result in this case. And that's it. So now we are, you know, we have the three components right here. So if I go and say, dude, just go and show me the initial, it's just going to go and it will show you the initial, right? We get the initial keyword right here. But the thing is that we need a way to switch to different screens. We need to show the initial, then the confirm, and then much later, the results. So we need kind of a controlled way to do this. So I'm going to go right here and just create a function. And this function is going to listen for a number. And let me just write the name first. Uh, it's going to listen for a number. And if the number is uh, zero, for example, it means that we need to show the initial. If the number is one, we need to show the confirm. And if, uh, of course, it's uh, two, we need to show result. Pretty simple. So I'm going to go. And for now, I'm just going to hard code the data. Later, in you know, just a couple of minutes, we are going to do it in a more dynamic way. So for now, it's going to be zero, right? That's the starting point of this application. And now what we can do, we just can do something simple. So we can say if the screen is completely equal to zero, we are going to be returning from this function the initial component. And as you know, functions work, whenever you return something, uh, everything else that you have, all the remaining code will not be executed. So now we just need to do the same. So we're going to go screen, it's going to be number one. And if the screen is going to be number two, we do, uh, you know, like this, and then we do like this. So now we know that the screen is, of course, zero. But the thing is that the, this function is the one that will be deciding, you know, will decide what to do. So I'm going to go and just delete this one, and I'm just going to go and call the function whenever the component mounts. So the application starts, we call the function, the function will decide what to do, and at the end of the day, we just get the component. That's why we get the initial. If I change this to two or maybe one, we are going to get the confirm, right? So hopefully you get the point. Now, of course, we are just hard coding the information. What we need to do is to create a way that when we advance through the different screens, we can change this value dynamically. So for this one, we're going to create a context, but we're going to do it on the next section. So let's go to the next video and uh, work with the initial component. Okay, so welcome back. So we're going to keep moving with this. Uh, we're going to do the initial right now. So if you think about this, and I show you this one, we need a title, we need an input, and every and after we type five uh, you know, characters, we are going to get this. So we need to create this on this component. We need to do something like this. All right, so let's just begin. I'm going to go right here. And first, remember, we need an H1. We need a title. 
So I'm going to go and say H1 and then say ask a question. And uh, since uh, I already gave you uh, the CSS, you're going to get it right away. You don't need to do anything else. Okay, so I'm going to go there. And remember, we need an input. I'm going to go and say that we need an input, open and close. So this one, of course, needs, uh, needs a couple of things. We need to know what's the name of this one, and it's going to be question. We need the type of this one, and the type is going to be, of course, text. This is a text value. And then we need the class name. So the class name, of course, it's form control, because this one is going to be controlled by Bootstrap. I mean, the style, at least. And there you go. We get it. Pretty simple. Now, of course, we need a button. So first, I'm going to create it, and then we're going to handle the button. So this one is going to say next or could this could say, you know, go next or something like that. All right. So I'm going to go to button. And uh, since this is, a, again, a bootstrap button, I'm going to need to do BTN. OK, so I'm going to save it for now. And we get that. We just get the input and we get the button. Pretty simple. That's why I'm giving you the CSS. So we don't have to, you know, lose time typing in CSS. We just can focus on the JavaScript side of things. So what I want to do Every time I type more than five characters, I want to show the next. So it means that the next needs to be hidden. And at one point, we need to change the state of that button and then show it. So we're going to need a state for the button. And we are going to need to listen to whatever the, whatever data uh, the user is entering, you know, whatever characters the user is entering on the input. So we can easily do this with a ref and with a use state. So I'm going to go to, uh, at the top. And we need to import from React. And we need to bring the use ref, just like this. And then we need to bring the use and then state. OK. So first, we need, a, we need to create a ref. And the ref is a place where we're going to be storing whatever the user is entering within the input, you know, whatever value. So first, I'm going to say const. And my name is going to be a text input. You can call this whatever you wish. And what we do right here is we just use that hook, the use ref. So now we need to tie this text input to something, which in this case is going to be the input, right? So the way we do it when we use uh, refs is by calling the keyword ref. And we open and close and say, now this input, it's tied to the text input. So every time we, we type something, we can access this property and check if we have a value. That's, that's you know, the whole idea. So then, of course, we need a state to handle the button. So I'm going to go right there and say the const open and close and then equal to and we are going to use the use state. So the use state needs an initial state because, again, this one is like it's a state. It needs to know something. So when the application starts or the component starts, it's going to be just false, right? It's just that that's the state. Now, the uh, use state needs uh, two things. First, the way it can access to this value. And this is the name of the variable. And what we are doing right now, let me just show you. We are saying, OK, so whenever we call show next, we are going to get either false or we get true. Depends on what we have right here. So at one point, we need to change this show next to true, right? That's it's how you know we show we uh, show the button. Right now, it's hidden. Whenever we have more than five, then we change this value to true, and the button shows. So we need a function, and that's the second argument right here. And by convention, it's called set show something or set do whatever you have right here. Since we have show next, it's going to be set and then show and then next. And that's it. So now remember, this one needs to hide when the application is, needs to be needs to be hidden when the application starts. So what we can do with React is that uh, you know we can go right here and say that if this is true, we're going to show it. If it's false. We are not gonna. And we do it like this. Let me just go and do it like that. I'm going to go chop this and put it inside. And there you go. So if this is true, the button will show. But as soon as it's, uh, you know, it's false, it will just hide. Since the default state is uh, false, yeah, the button will not show. Now, of course, what we need to do now is we need a way we can change that state. You know, we can change the state of the button when we add more than five characters. That's the trick. So all of this is going to happen when the user changes the input. So what we can do right here is we can listen for an on change. And every time that this input changes, we're going to check the text input. OK, so I'm going to go right here and say that we are going to create a handle 
and then change. And this is just the name of the function. You can call this whatever you want. So this function, the only thing it needs to do, it needs to listen to the text input. It needs to check the text input. And if we have more than five characters, we're going to change the state of the button. And if we have less, we're going to set it to false. If we have more, we're going to set it to true. That's, that's the idea. So, okay, so the name of the function is handle change. All right, so I'm going to go there, open and close. I'm going to go right here. So remember, we need to check the text input. So I'm going to go and say if, and I'm going to make a reference to the text input. Now, the way we get the value the user is typing, you know, whatever the user is typing right here, is by accessing that reference, you know, the text input in this case. This, again, could be clown or dog or cat or whatever you wish. So the way we get to, to access is by, is by doing, you know, the name of the reference, then current, then value, just like this. And then we're going to check the length. So we're going to say length. And it's actually like this. There we go. So if the length of that uh, of that value is more than five, it means that we are cool. So we're going to show next or set show next in this case. And I'm going to change it to true. So the state will change. The application will reload or re-render in this case, and it, it will show the button. If not, if you have less than five, we're going to do the opposite. We're just going to run the other one. So I'm going to say shut, uh, set, oh, not that word, set show next, sorry, uh, to false. And that's it. That's the whole, you know, very, the, the whole code It's very, very simple. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to reload the application, right? So we have nothing. So we get nothing. So as soon as I type one, two, three, four, five, then we get the next. Super cool. And if we go back, this is already listening. So it's going to show it or hide it, depending on, you know, how many characters we have right here. Just very simple. Now, of course, now what we need is to catch the submission. So when we click next, what I want to do, I want to check if we have a question and we don't have more than, I don't know, 50 characters, because maybe the question is too long. You're just adding validation. So we need a way to catch when the user clicks on next, right? All right, so pretty simple. What we need to do is to go to the button and say that we want a non-click right here. So whenever the user, uh, you know, clicks, we're going to handle and then submit. All right, that's the name of the function. You can call this whatever you wish. So this is going to be just a function, and the function is going to do something. All right, so remember, what do we need to do? We need to check that the value that the user is entering, the, t the input, uh, it's you know, whatever we want it to be. So in this case, I'm going to go and say const value and say that that one is going to be equal to this. And I'm doing this because we need to use this uh, code a couple of times right here, or maybe we're going to use it much later. So uh, by doing this, we just only use value and we don't have to do text input dot current that value every single time we want to use it. So okay, I'm going to do something simple much later if we have time uh, we are going to do something better. But for now, I'm just going to add a simple validation. I'm just going to say if the value dot length is greater than, I don't know, uh, maybe 20. It's uh, or maybe let's do let's do 50. Uh, let's do 30. That's fine. So if it's greater than than uh, 30, uh, we're going to say that the everything is too long. So I'm going to go and return false so we can exit of this function. But first, we want to do something. And for now, I'm just going to say console log error. Or you know what? I can do an alert. Why not? Alert. And I'm going to say error. OK. So of course, if everything is cool, we're going to move forward to the next section. And this is something that we're going to do in a minute. All right. So that's it. So I'm going to go reload the application. I'm going to do less than five. Of course, we cannot move forward. As soon as I go next, I'm going to go next. And we have less than 30, so we get go next. So at this point right here, we're going to be calling a function to move on to the next component. That's the idea. But we don't have that code yet. We're going to do it in a second. Now, what happens if you have more than 30? I'm going to go type something and then just, you know, put a lot of data right here. So I'm going to go next and we get error. So of course, maybe the alert, uh, you know, sucks a little bit. So what I want to do, I want to show an error. I want to display an error right here at the bottom. And we can use the same logic we use with the button. You know, if the state is true, we show it. If it's false, we don't show it. So I'm going to go there and say 
that uh, maybe maybe I'm going to do the div first. I'm going to go and say that the div is going to be something with a class of error, right? Error. Cool. And I'm going to say the question is too long. Right now is the only validation we have. So, okay. so I'm going to go there. And what do, we, what, what do we want to do? We want to show if something is something and hide if it's false, okay? So we just need to do the same. Just going to go right here. I don't need to type everything again. We just need to create a state for this. So this, uh, since we are going to work with errors, this one is going to be show error. And this one is going to be the set show and then error. So now it's going to start as false because we don't want to show any errors at the beginning. So I'm going to go there, open and close and say show error and then and, of course. And I'm going to go and just chop this and close it. Cool. All right. So there you go. So now, of course, when the application starts, we get no errors. But as soon as we set this to true, we're going to get the error. So, okay. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go and use the set error. And I'm going to set it to true. That's the only thing we need to do right here. Now, there are better you know, ways of creating validation. And hopefully we get time to do it. Remember, this is a free course and we can only do two hours. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do more than 30. And that's, you know, when we are going to get the error. So next, and the question is too long. So that, that works. All right. So cool. You know, it just, just works. Now, what do we need to do? Well, we need to create the logic of going to the next section or going back or storing the question. Because remember, if we are here and we write a question and go to the next component, and maybe the question was too long, this component needs to know what the question is. So we need to store it on a different place. So, right, so we're going to do that. So go, let's go to the next section and let's create a context. Okay, so welcome back. So on this one, we need to create a context. And the context is going to be, it's actually super important for us. The context is what will link all the components together. So uh, we could do this with Redux, for example, uh, we are going to use the context, or we could do this by, pa by passing props, you know, just going right here and saying whatever, whatever, it's equal to a function and then just run the function. Uh, we can do something like that. But in this case, I believe that the context is going to be the easier way of uh, uh, connecting a, comp a component with the other ones. So yeah, we're going to do that. So, okay, I'm going to go right here on the source and I'm going to create a directory called the context. Now you can put the context, whatever you want. It's just a JavaScript file with a class or a functional component. Uh, when it comes to, oh, when I made a mistake right there. Uh, when it comes to creating a context, I like to do classes, uh, but you can, uh, you can create a function, uh, just a functional component with a context. All right, so let me show you how it works. So first I'm gonna need to import uh, React from React. We are gonna use it. Then I'm gonna go do open and close, then from, and then React. And this one needs to be component. Okay. So then I'm going to go right here and we need to create a class. So I'm going to say class and this one is going to be my provider. This is the name of the class and I need to extend uh, the component. And this is like the classic way of creating a component within React. Now we also need to create a context. And the way we do it is by creating just a function called my context, in this case, context. And this one is going to be equal to we enter react, the react we are importing right here, and we just create or call the method create context. So this one will create a context right here. And we're gonna, of course, use it in a minute. So this one is just a standard, you know, class. At the end of the day, this needs to return something. So I'm gonna go and render. This is how we return from a from a class. And then we just, we just need to return something. Now, at the end of the day, this too, the context and the provider, they need to be part of other components. So we need to export them. So since we need to export both, I'm going to do export, and then I'm going to export the my provider, and then I'm going to export the my context. So I'm, I'm just exporting both, uh, both things. Okay, cool. So the thing is that when we, we create my provider, this needs to connect to the context. And this is what is going to be shared to the, all the other components. The thing is that we are using the class to handle everything that happens on the context. 
So this my context will give you something called the provider. And the way we use it is by going right here and saying that whatever we put inside and we call provider will be part of the application. So, okay, so let me just go here and I'm going to go there. So this uh, provider uh, with the context needs, really, really needs to wrap whatever we are doing on this application. So now this app is going to be a children of this. So this is like the top, you know, higher component. So whatever goes inside is going to be a children. So since we are going to use children, we need to call the this that props dot children. All right. So that's it. Now, if, if you don't get it, don't worry, you're going to get it. Uh, you're going to get it in a second. So as you know, you might know with uh, classes, we can have a state and the state is something that we can change, uh, you know, we can change dynamically. So for now, we, we don't have a lot of information. So I'm going to say that we have a screen and the screen position is going to be the zero. If, and if you're trying to guess, remember that we use the screen right here. So we're going to use that value from the context. Okay. So at the end of the day, this context needs to wrap the whole application. So I'm going to go and put it right here and I'm going to go to the index. So the index needs to import something and I'm going to go and say from dot forward slash and then context. This is where we have the file and I need to export or import in this case, the whatever we are using to wrap the whole application, which is the my provider, you know, the class. So I'm going to bring the my provider. So now my provider is a parent component and the children is going to be the rest of the application. That's how it works. So now whatever data we have right here and whatever we do right here is going to be passed. That information is going to be passed to whatever the app has. If you think about this, the app has all the other components. So now they are all connected to the context. All right. So if we take this example and the app is already a children and it's already connected to the context, we should be able to access this screen. Okay. So that's, that's the whole idea. So, okay. So I'm going to go to the context. Now the context, it says that it has a state with a screen of zero. So if we want to share data with the children's, we need to go right here and specify which data we want to share. That's how it works. And the way we do it is by going and creating a property called value. And this value is going to be an object just an object. We open like this, but this one is the object. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to say, okay, so, you know, the context is going to share something called state. And that state is going to be equal to whatever we do right here, which is the this.state. So now this value or whatever we put right here is going to be available within the provider, you know, the context, and it will, it will be shared to the other components. So now the, the thing is that this is being shared by through here. Yeah. Right? And then we go here and we need a way to access that context, you know, and we have a special way of doing this. So since we are using a functional component, what we need to do is we need to bring a hook. So I'm going to go right here and say that we need to import open and close. And then we need to say from, and then we bring it from react. And what we need to bring in this case is going to be the use context right there. Okay. So I'm going to go and say, use context. Now, how can we use this? So this, this is a hook. So the way we use hooks is by creating the context. This is the keyword. And then we say equal to, and then we use the keyword context. And we need to make a reference to the actual context that we are exporting right here, which is this one. So I'm going to go and import it. So I'm going to go at the top and say, I want to import then my, and then context. And it's going to be from context, right? So now we are going to use the hook. This hook is going to connect to that context. And since the application is already connected to, you know, to everything is going to get that data and we get it inside the context. So now if I wanted to, I can do a console log console dot log and say that I want to see whatever we get inside context and then state. And when we go to the application and reload it, I'm going to go to inspect, we go to console and we see that we have an object and inside we have the screen. So yeah, so we are just tapping into the context and we are getting whatever we have, we have right here. 
So this could be dog and, you know, maybe true or whatever. It doesn't matter. This is still going to get it. Going to go reload it and we get the value. So the idea of using a context is that now we can share this data with this component, but we can also share it with this component or this or this. That's, you know, again, the whole idea of using a context. Okay, so now, since we have access to the context, we have access to the screen. So what are we going to do? I'm going to go and say context.state.screen. And I'm going to go and remove this one. And by default, it's the screen number zero. So now if I reload the application, we are going to be loading the screen number zero. So what's the trick? You know, what, what do we need to do now? So when we type something and we need to move next, we need to access to the context and trigger a function that will change this value. And whenever this gets up, gets updated right here, this one is going to get updated as well because it's connected to the context. That's, you know, again, how it works. So, okay. So right now we just need to go to the initial and we need to uh, connect to the context right here. So I'm going to go bring the use context and I'm going to go right here at the bottom and I'm going to import the context from the context. So dot, 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 forward slash, and then context. And remember the name was my context. So I'm going to go and say my context. So I'm going to go there and say that we want to bring the context from here, use context. And we say that the name is my context. So now this one has access to the context. So, okay. So what do we want to do right here? We want to go next and we have no function that goes to the next set, the next section. You know, we have no function on the context that goes to the screen and changes this to one or two or three or whatever. So we need to create that function. And we also need a function that will store whatever the user is uh, typing right here so we can pass it to the other components. Okay. So we, we just need to create, create that first. Okay. So how can we do this? Well, we just need to create a function and that function, then we share it right here. And whenever this get called, this, this function gets called, whatever we have right here is going to execute and the data will update. All right. That's, that's the whole idea. So, okay. So I'm going to go right here and first I'm going to do the go to. So I'm going to say handle, then go, and then to. And this is the name of the function. And since we are inside of a class, we just don't need uh, to do const, right? That's just not going to work. We just need to provide a name and just write the function. Okay. So, okay. So what this one is going to do is just going to go to the next screen. So we are going to be passing an argument. So what do we need to do? We just need to change the screen to one or to two or to whatever the value says. All right. So I'm going to go to zero. And whenever we get, you know, we call this function, we're going to do this dot set state. This is how we can change the state from a, from a class. And we're going to say screen. What is the value of screen? So whatever we get as a, as an argument. So now we have this function that will just, you know, mutate or change the screen, but we are not providing this function. We are not giving access uh, to the value right here. So the other components cannot trigger this. So how can we do it? Pretty simple, just like the state. I'm going to go and say that now we have something called go to, and that go to, whenever we call it, is going to go and run the this handle go to. So since now this initial uh, component, it's connected to the context, we can say go to the context, trigger the go to, the go to is going to go to this function and this function is going to change the state. That's how it, uh, how it works. And by doing this, we pretty much have like 50% of the application in the back. Okay. So, okay. So we need to uh, go to initial and remember we are already connected to the context. Now what we need to do is to move next. So we just need to go and say, we need to access to the context, call the function that will, you know, we need to execute, which is the go to, and we need to pass an argument. Remember, this is the, the initial is the screen number zero. Since we want to go to the one, I just pass one. This is going to go to the context. It's going to go run this. It will receive the value. And then we're going to get the screen. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to reload it. We're going to, we're going to try it. So I'm going to type something. I know that th this is valid. And as I click next, it's going to the next screen, which is the confirmed one, right? Super cool and easy. So another thing that we need to do is we need a way to store uh, the question. 
So I'm going to go and create a new property. And this one works the same way. The question starts as, as nothing. And then when we do the initial and we move forward, we need to store the question someplace. So, okay, so I'm going to go and do the same thing. It's just, you know, just repeat. So we're going to, instead of handle go to, I'm going to do handle question. And this one, it's equal to a value that we are uh, going to receive. So I'm going to say re value. And this one will go to the state and update the question to whatever we have right here, right? Cool. So now, of course, we need to uh, go and say, maybe update question seems like a good name, or maybe just question. And I'm going to say that whenever we call this one, whenever we call question, we're going to run this function. All right. So now what do we go? We go to the initial. And instead of, you know, just doing nothing right here, we're going to go and say context. Then we call the question. And what do we need to do? We need to pass the value that we have on the input that we don't have right now, but this one, you know? And if you remember, we have the value right here. So we say go to the, the context and put and store the question to whatever property we want to use it. So the next components, the other ones, now we'll know what is the name, you know, what is the number of the screen and what is the question. That's the whole idea. So now, of course, the next component is going to be the, the confirm. And on this one, we just need to show, you know, a couple of buttons that we're going to do in a minute. But in essence, we need to do the same thing. We need to tap to the context. So I'm going to go to right here. I'm going to copy and I'm going to go there and then use the context. For now, this is the only thing we're going to use. And then I'm just going to go and just copy because we don't need to type it again. We just can copy several parts, copy paste. So I'm going to go and say use context. And remember this one, the only thing that needs to know for now is the question. So I'm going to go and just, you know, to prove you, to prove that this works, I'm going to say that I want to say, I want to get access to the context. Remember this one is inside the state and I'm making a mistake right here, uh, with the state and then the property calls a uh, question, right? So state and then question. So now if we do it again, I should be getting the question when I go to the next screen. So if I go next, we get it. Cool. All right. So what we need to do now is to do the layout and we're going to do it on the next section. And this one is going to be pretty simple. It's just going to take five minutes or even less. Okay. So welcome back. And uh, right now we need to do the confirm section. So this one is going to be a piece of cake. So the only thing we need to do is to show something like this. Your question is access to the question, which is something that we are already doing. And then, you know, add some buttons to trigger something on the context to move forward, which is a function that we already have with the go to and, uh, and then the go back and we just need to clear the question. That's it. So it's going to be very simple. So I'm going to go right there and first we need a title. So I'm going to make it an H3 and I'm going to say your question is and then something. And we already have the question right here, but this one will need to go inside a div with a class name. And the class name, it's viewer. That's the class name. And inside, I'm just going to go and put this. All right. So that's it. So we should be getting something cool. So we get it. Cool. So, okay. So let's do the button. Uh, the buttons, so it's something that we didn't do so far. So I'm going to go right here and say that I want to create a div. And this div will hold the buttons. So first, I'm going to add a line. And then I'm going to go and say button, open and close. This one will need a class name of BTN. And this button, it's going to be the decide it. So this one is the go next. And the other one is going to be the go back, which is going to be ask a new question. All right. So if we go, we get it. Now we're going to handle the transitions in a, in a couple of minutes. So, okay. So what do we need to do? We need to go next and then we need to go back. And if you think about this, we already have this. So we just need to go to the context. If we go next, if you go here, so I'm going to go and say that every time that we click on this, we're going to go next. So go next. We can create the function from here, but I much prefer to create a function on the actual, you know, component. So const then is going to be go and then next equals to something. And then when we call it, the only thing we need to do is to go to and it's the screen number two. That's it. For now, that's it. 
And then we, the other one is going to be the go back. So we're going to go there and say go back. Go back. And uh, the go back, it's just pretty much the same. The only thing we need to change is this go back. And we need to go to, and instead of going to the number two, we're going to go to back to the beginning. Now, remember as well, when we go back, we change the question, we just wipe the question. It's like starting over. And again, we already have this. So I'm going to go and say that the, con the question is going to be nothing. Back to zero. And that's it. That's the only thing we need to do on this component. So I'm going to reload the application. I'm going to type something. We get the button. I'm going to do next. And if I go back, we go back and everything starts over. And if I go next and then decide it, we go to the final components, you know, to the final view. Okay, so one thing that looks really, really buckly is the uh, buttons, you know, we could do an, a tiny animation there. So what we can do is run or just look for an animate that CSS. And this is one of the most famous, you know, libraries uh, to do animations with CSS or transitions with CSS. It's pretty simple to use and you have a lot of different transitions. So we can use this one. So I'm going to go uh, and we need to install it. So I'm going to go and do npm install, blah, 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 blah dash that safe. So I'm going to go to our project. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to make this bigger and I'm going to say npm install animate.css. Now, once this is done, uh, we just need to restart the server again. And the way that this works is that we need to include the CSS in our project. That's the only thing we need to do. So I'm going to go make this a little bit smaller. It's taking uh, quite a while. It's not usual. So meanwhile, uh, I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm, oh, there we go. So I'm going to do npm uh, start again. And the way we, again, we do it is by including the import of animate CSS. Notice that you get it right here on the documentation. Yeah. So that's what we need to do. So, you know, we could put it on the index, but the initial part of our application is as well, the, the app.js, and we are already importing CSS. So I'm going to go and say, give me the animate.css. For now, it's just that. So I'm going to go and, and say yes right here. It's going to run it on the 3001, that's for sure. And I'm going to go and use this. And the way that this works, and you all, of course, you have the documentation right here. The way that this works is that you need to attach a, a class. Let me close this one and I'm going to go to the initial. Uh, then you need to attach a class to the button. And uh, this is a, just a CSS transition. So it's just going to do its job. You don't need to do much. So I'm going to go and say that the BTN is still the same. And the way this works is that we need to say animate underscore underscore and animate it. That's the first class you need to use. Now, the second class is going to be what is it? You know, what's the transition is going to be? Which transition are you going to use? So I'm going to use uh, maybe a fade in, you know, just a just something dumb. I'm going to go just copy this one. And I'm going to say that whenever we show the button, we are going to do an animation, a transition in. And remember, this one gets, uh, you know, removed from the DOM because we are just showing it or hiding it, hiding it. So I'm going to go back and just give it a test. I'm going to type something and we get the transition. Of course, we remove it and we get the transition again. Now, if I move next, I want to do the same thing with the buttons, but I want to add a delay. And this is something that you already get with the same library. So I'm going to copy this. So, okay. So on the confirm, what I want to do is not uh, transition the button itself. I just want to, I want to transition all. So we still get the, oh, and I made a mistake right there. We still get the animate, animate, you know, underscore, underscore animate. That's what we get. We need to delete the BTN. And uh, maybe I'm going to use a different a different animation. I'm going to use a bounce in, which is you know, just a little bit different. So I'm going to say bounce in. Now, I want to do this animation after a little while we load the component. Notice it's just happening right away. Uh, but, you know, I want to wait. So uh, they give you a way of doing this, which is really cool. So we get animate underscore underscore delay dash and then the, you know, the amount of time. So you can go up to five seconds. 
So it's going to wait, wait for one second after the component loads and then fire the, uh, the animation or the transition. So let's drag in, going to type something, going to do next, one second, and then it goes. Super easy, right? OK, so now what we need to do is we need to finish pretty much with the whole application. When we go to decide it, we want to get a result from here. That's what we want to do. All right, so welcome back. And on this one, we're going to do the result. And it's going to be fairly simple, but we need to do a few things in a different way. Now, we're still going to need the context. So I'm going to go right here. And instead of typing everything again, I'm just going to copy paste because that's what we do in real life as, as developers. We Google <laughs> and we copy paste. So use context and I'm going to use the use effect and I'm going to, to explain why in a minute. So, OK, so the result component, uh, as soon as we load something, what we want to do is we want to show the result. We're going to get a random answer and give that answer to the user. So I'm going to say H3, open and close, and then say your answer is something, right? And on this one, we don't even need to type because it's the same component, you know, the same view. Now, of course, now we need to provide some information right here. So I'm going to go and say your answer is, right? So pretty cool. So we are getting something at least. So remember, when this component loads, this one, what we need to do is we need to go to the context. We need to evaluate what we have. Let me just open the context. We need to evaluate what we have as a question and not, not as a question, but what we have as data. And then we need to make a decision. Now, the thing is that we need a list in order to provide an answer from the list, because that's what we, we are doing right here. When I go to cite it, this call the police, police, it's something we have on a list. So I already have the list. Now, remember, and this is time when I need to remind you that all the data that we are doing right here is on GitHub. Every single section that we do is being stored, you know, inside within GitHub. So you can go to the code and just copy the code. You, you don't even need to type this with me. You just can go to, get, to GitHub and get it. OK, so remember, I just need a list in order to make this work. So I'm going to go back to the provider. And what I can do, I can just provide a dumb list. So I'm going to say, and you know what? I'm not going to type it. I just can copy paste because you can add whatever you want to the list. What I did is yes, no, maybe not sure. Try again and ask a friend and then call the police. If you want to add more things, be feel free to do it. All right. So, okay. So what do we need to do when the application, uh, the, the component result loads, we need to go to the list. We need to get a random value and we need to send it back so we can show it right here. Right. OK, so right from the start, we just need a new property called result and whatever random value we get from here, we're going to store it on the result. OK, so now from here, we need to call a function that lives inside the provider that will get a random value out of this. So I'm going to go and create it. It's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to call it handle result, open and close. And the only thing we need to do is just get a random value now. Whenever I do very specific code, like, you know, get a very specific random value, I like to split this on different functions because my, maybe later you're going to reuse it. So it's always a good idea to split very specific function functions. So this one will give you a random result. That's it. You know, you cannot ask this function for more. So the only thing we need to do is just return something from here. So how can we get a random value from an array? We just go to the array, which is called list, of course. And I'm going to go and say math, then floor. And I've done this a million times in my life. So math floor, open and close. And then we go to math and then random, just like this. Open and close. And then we multiply it by the list dot. And then we go to the length. And this one will give you a random value. It's just a pretty simple function. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and create a, a variable called rand. And this one, it will call this function. So at the end of the day, we are going to get a random value from the list within this property, you know, within this variable. And what, you know, what do we need to do? We need to set the state because the result is going to be connected through the context. So whenever the result changes, this is going to change, right? Okay. So 
going to I'm going to go here and say that this dot set state open and close and the result is going to be equal to whatever we get from rand from the random value that's it now we're going to do something in between but first i need to show you why we can do that so now we have a function called handle result that will give you a random value and it will update the state so now of course we need to go right here and uh you know connect that function to the other components so i'm going to say result and this one is going to be equal to this dot and then handle result and now that there, notice that there's a kind of a connection right here it's question handle question result handle result then go to handle go to so this is kind of a convention uh, but at the end of the day you can do whatever you want right you're you are the developer right here all right, so now we have a function that we can call. Now, the problem is that we need to call it only once, right? When the, um, the uh, component loads, we just call it once. And then if we wanted to, we can re-trigger that function by clicking the decide again. But the problem is that we need to load it only once. And that's the, 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 you know, the issue right here. Now, how can we run something once on our component? Okay. So first, I'm going to go and copy this one because we're going to use it, right? And I'm going to go right here at the bottom. So the way we run things on a, com on a functional component just like this, just once, is by using the use effect. You have many ways, you know, maybe a couple more ways, but the use effect is the uh, classic way we do it. So we use the use effect, which is a hook, and then open and close. So the use effect will run pretty much on everything. That's how the use effect works. Now, if I do something like this and then say context dot get me that result, I'm executing this function. This is going to go to the context, trigger the result. This one is going to go get the random value and set the state. So when we set the state, this one, it's updating the state. So this one will keep running and running and running because every time the application loads, we are triggering a new update. So if we do it like this, this will be uh, an infinite loop. And that is the problem. So I'm going to go reload it and we're going to try again. I'm going to go there, going to do next. I'm going to go decide it and notice it's going crazy. So we are in a loop. So the way we stop this is by doing right here and notice it's just stopped. So, okay, so the way we do it is by doing open and close, right? By doing this and leaving it empty, this component is going, only going to run once. And that's why we don't get the hook. Now, you do get a warning because when you use the uh, use effect, you need to use the dependency. But the thing is that if I use context, every time that we update the context is going to fire the use effect, which is something I don't want. Now, this is not an error. It's just a warning. All right. So, okay. So, cool. So, now if I go here, I should be able to tap first to the context. Let me go here, context, state, and then result, because we are getting it right here. So when we trigger the function and it changes, we are going to get it from here, from this state. All right. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to go reload the application. I'm going to go type the next. Then I'm going to go and decide it. And we get it. Not sure. Try again. Okay. So what I want to do now, I want to... Uh, add the buttons to generate the, you know, the decide again and the start over. And this is, again, it's going to be fairly simple because we already have the layout for this. We only need to change the functions that we need to trigger when you, uh, you know, when we just press the button. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to, you know, copy that and just paste it. Now, we don't need to go to a function if you don't have, if you don't want right here, right? So... Right now, on the confirm, we are calling a function and the function is doing something. But if you want to call the context di directly from the on click, you can do it. Yeah, why not? So right now, uh, if we want to ask a new question, what we do is we just get a new value, right? And if you think about this, this is what we are doing with this. We are just getting a random value. So what I can do, I just can go and say, go to the context and run the result. All right, that's it. And then I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it now since, you know, I'm going to do context and then dot reset. So we need to create a reset. We don't have a reset on the context. So if I go here 
we need to create something that will reset the whole thing back to zero. And this is going to be fairly simple because we just need to update the state. So if I go back, I'm going to say handle and then reset. And this is just a function that we are going to be calling. And the only thing we need to do is just this, then set state, open and close. And I need to go here and say that the screen is going to be equal to zero, the question equal to nothing, and the and the result equal to, equal to nothing. That's it. So now, of course, we need to call the reset. Reset. And this one is going to be this dot handle reset. And that's it. This is a pretty much done application. application. Now we are going to have a problem with the result that we need to solve right now. So I'm going to go reload the application. We, we get the buttons. We can see that. So next, then we decide it and we get the yes. So, okay. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to ask a new question or decide it. Oh, actually, I made a mistake. We need to change the buttons, right? So this one is not going to be decided. This one is going to be start and then over. And the other one is going to be decide again. Hopefully, I don't have to reload the application. And OK. So if I click on this, in theory, we are going to get a new value, right? Because we are calling that result. So we do. You know, we get a new value. And that, you know, is great. Now, if you click, if you go start over, everything goes back to the beginning. So that works. OK, so I want to show you something else. I'm going to go there and go there. So if I decide again, notice that we get maybe. I'm going to keep clicking. And at one point, it's not going to give me a new value because we have a problem. So remember, every time we go, uh, I'm going to click again. And I'm going to tell you when I click is right now we have this value. And it's click, click, click. Let's do more and more. Click again and again and again and again. One more time. Let's keep, just keep going. Keep going. And there you go. I just did a new click and this one didn't change. So at one point, the click will fail. Why? Pretty simple. I'm going to go there. And when we get a random value, we are just saying, go to the list and give me a value. It doesn't matter. We already have a value right here. So the problem is that if we have a yes right here, and then at one point, we just keep clicking and we are getting a new value. What happens if we get yes again? This one is going to keep showing yes, right? So the, that click will fail. So what we need to do is to make sure that whenever we get a new value from decide again, is not going to be equal to the one we had before. And if it is, we're going to do a random again. That's the trick. And if, uh, and I know it sounds complex, but the, the actual code is super simple. I'm going to go here and say if open and close. And I'm just going to go to the this, that state, and then result. And if first, I'm going to make sure that the result is not empty. And then we just do a while. So while the result is equal, you know, that we have yes and yes, we're going to keep getting a random value. So I'm going to go there and say, if the rand it's one, two, three, completely, completely equal to the this, that state, that result, it means that the values are the same. So we have a yes and a yes, or maybe a maybe and a maybe, right? So if this is the case, I'm not going to accept, I'm not going to accept whatever we get from the rand. I'm going to go and say, dude, the rand needs to run again. So I'm going to go and say that the rand is equal to whatever we get from the random value. And this one will keep going to uh, going and getting a random value until we get something that it's different. So right now, if I go to the application and try it again, I'm going to go decided and I'm going to go decide again. And every time I click and you could, you know, you could click forever. We are not going to get the same value twice ever. So that works. All right. So that's it. If we think about this is the finished application. Now we need to do, uh, we need to make uh, some enhancements uh, that we're going to do on the next section. So let's go to the next one and let make, uh, let's make this a little bit better. Okay, so welcome back. And on this one, we're going to make the project just a little bit better. So when uh, let me just show you first what we're going to do. When we uh, load the component and we move next, what I want to do is just a nice fade out and then fade in. 
Same thing with all the other components. That's what I want to do, right? And if we start over, we go back. And this is an issue that we get with, you notice it's a, just a HTML issue. So, okay. So maybe it's a browser issue, I don't know. Okay, so let me uh, just go back and show you how this works. First, I'm gonna close everything. And the only thing I'm gonna open is the app uh, screen, the app.js. So maybe you're thinking, okay, so we're gonna do this with the transition CSS. No, it's not gonna work with that. So what we need to do is we need to install a package that you know a million years ago was uh, part of the React, uh, you know, the React application, the whole React. But the, now we need to install it uh, as a separate module. So what we need to do is a CSS transition. It will give us that movement, you know, that fade out, that, that you know, CSS transition. But the thing is that the application has no idea when a component goes out and a component goes in. So we need to use something called switch transition. And this is something that was inspired uh, by BU, the, the BU transition modes. Okay, so first of all, you know, just, just to start, we just need to install this. And notice it says when you go to the main uh, npm install React Transitions group, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do clear, just like that. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and install the React Transitions group. All right, so this is going to take a little while, of course. And uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go right here at the top. Now we need to import two main things from here. So first I'm going to do import, open and close. And this one is going to be from and react transitions group. And it's taking a long time. I don't know why. And this is new for me. It's usually, you know, maybe NPM is a little bit slow today. I don't know. Okay. So when we do NPM and start, uh, what I want to do is bring from react transitions group and we need to bring this switch, uh, switch transitions group or switch transition, and then the CSS transition. I mean, okay. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to wrap whatever we want to transition with this switch and the CSS. So the first one, the one that's going to be the parent of everything is the switch transition. Open and close. So whatever we do right here needs to be a children of this, right? Now then we have individual components and one is going to go out and the other one is going to go, go in and so on and so on. So this transitioning, uh, you know, the uh, actual CSS transition is going to be handled by the CSS transition. So now this one needs to be a children of the CSS transition. Now, just by doing this, uh, the transitions group has no idea what to do. Nah, no idea at all. So we need to pass some instructions. So first is going to be the mode of the transition. So I'm going to go say mode and the mode that we get, it's in or out or out and in. And since we are saying out and in, it means that a component needs to go out. And whenever it's out, then we're going to transition the component in and so on and so on. If we do an in and out, it's going to be a little bit weird. It's going to go and do the next, uh, you know, the next component first in. And then it's going to remove this one, which is something that we don't want. We want to go this out and then we bring the next one in. Now, if we do something like this, this is again, just not going to work. We're going to get, you know, a lot of errors because the CSS transition needs more information. It needs a timeout, it needs a key, and it needs a class name in this case. So, okay. So I'm going to go right here and say that the timeout is going to be, let's say 500 milliseconds. And this is the time that the application is go the CSS transition is going to use to make the transition. If I go and show you on the final one, I'm going to go do next. It's 500 milliseconds. That's the, how the animation is going to last, right? Okay. It's pretty, pretty simple. Now, of course, the CSS transition, uh, only, the only thing it knows is to do a transition to show with this, uh, an opacity or maybe with a CSS effect and hide has no idea that we are changing components inside. And the way that the CSS transition can be aware that we are loading different components and showing things that are different inside here is by adding a key. So I'm going to go and say key. Now the key, of course, it's something that you could put, you could put whatever you want right here. It could be one or two or A or B or whatever. But the thing is that when this key is different, then CSS transition is going to assume 
that you're doing something different, so it's going to run the transition. So, you know, if you think about, about this, how can we let the transition know that we are doing a change and changing the component, right? What's, what's the property that changes the component? The screen, right? The screen we have on the context. So this one, every time we change the screen, is going to go from 0 to 1, 0 to 2, and so on and so on. So now the key, we can say that the key is going to be deciding uh, when the CSS transition is going to apply the transition, you know, the effect. Now, if we do something like this, still, you know, nothing is going to happen. I'm going to go, go there, go next, and it's just, you know, a little bit weird. Now, this is just a different error, but that's fine. We're going we're gonna to fix it. So uh, I'm going to go here, but notice that we get no transition at all. It's kind of a going, it's working, but we get just a warning. And I believe this warning, it's something about uh, that the uh, transitions group needs an update, but that's fine. Okay, so by default, and I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to go and, and put 10 seconds. Actually, this is 10 seconds. 10,000. So 1,000 is one second, 10,000 uh, 10, is 10 seconds. So when we run this, behind the scenes, the CSS transition is going to attach to this component a class. And that class will be how, you know, we are going to be uh, animating all of this. So I'm going to go start again. I'm going to go and select this component. They're going to stand there, right? I'm gonna go and stand there. All right. Let me make this bigger. So, okay. so when I go and type something and I do next, what this is going to do is going to attach a new class to the whole component. Notice that we get exit, exit, uh, exit active, and it's going to last for 10 seconds. Then when the 10 seconds are up, it's going to remove the component and the next component will get an enter and enter active. So the way that this works is that by attaching CSS classes, we can provide some instructions and do the transition. That's how it works. That's why it's called CSS transition. Now, if we go to the assets, I already give you this. Notice that you get it right here. And I'm using the zoom. Maybe I'm going to need to do something else. Let me just double check. I thought it was doing a fade, but maybe I did zoom. All right, so let me, let me just double check. And yes, I made a mistake on this one. I gave you, uh, this is actually is wrong, but that's fine. That's fine. We're going to fix it uh, right now. Maybe I could give you this a new CSS so you don't have to type it. So, okay. So now we know that behind the scenes, this is attached in CSS classes. But what we can do, we can say that the class names are going to be different. So instead of using Zoom, I want to use Fade. So behind the scenes again is going to use Fade dash Enter, Fade dash Interactive, and Fade blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go and change this to Fade. I'm going to go and do Fade, Fade again, Fade, and Fade. And I want to change what this is going to happen. So I'm going to go remove this and remove this. So we only have four. Okay. So remember, the enter is going to be when the component enters. So if you think about this, the component is going to be uh, non-visible. So it's going to be opacity zero, because this is the initial state of the component. What's happened when, when it's active? So it means that it's going to be transitioned and the opacity is going to be one because it's visible. So we do transition. And right here, you can put whatever you want or run, run whatever animation you wish. It's just completely up to you. And then I'm going to say opacity one. So by this, this is the enter. So it means the component is going to show and we run this transition. We go from opacity zero to one and it lasts 500 milliseconds. So my recommendation is always use the same values that you're using right here. In this case, we are using uh, uh, 10,000. We should use 500 milliseconds. So half a second. So when, what, what's going to happen when we remove the element, the component from the screen? So we do the opposite. It's uh, opacity is going to start, you know, from visible. And when we remove it, we do the opposite. We do transition 0, 5, and then it's opacity 0 because we are just removing it. And, you know, the component is going to handle, handle this for us. The transition and the switch will handle this for us. And that's it. That's the only thing we need to do. Now, there's, of course, much a lot of other things you can do with transitions group. And uh, we could make a whole course just with transitions. So let's see if this works. I'm going to go type something. 
I'm going to do next. And there you go. It works. It's just removing, applying the transition, you know, from visible to not visible. And then the next one is going to be entered. So we get the transitioning in and we get the same thing for all the components. All right. So that's it. Okay, so welcome back. So we're going to make the application a little bit better. Uh, so there's one more thing that really annoys me about this application, and it's how the errors work. So if I go right here and I do next, this is pretty ugly, just super ugly. So what I want to do, I want to, to get a toast. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do first. I'm going to go and if we, uh, you know, we uh, the questioning is too long, I'm going to do a, 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 just a toast with the library, of course. Now, the cool thing about this is that we don't need to use the error system just like we are using. Once we install the toasts, we can just run toasts wh whatever we want. And the library that we are going to use is this one. It's called React Toastify. It's really good. Everyone is using it. So it's just fantastic. A very good library. And it works great. So first, we need to do the installation. So I'm going to go and do npm install. Right here, you get it. So I'm going to go just kill the server and do npm install. And since today npm is a little bit, you know, slow, it might take a while. So if I go right here, they will give you information about how you can run this. And by default, you need to create a common container and uh, then you need to import their CSS. All right, so we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna go run the server. Okay, so yeah. And, uh, and okay, so first we need to bring the toast container. That's how it works. It needs a very common place where it will show or put the code of the toast. Now, since this is a global container, I'm going to put it on the more, you know, global side of our application. So I'm going to go here and say that I want to bring this toast container and then the toast is for something else. So this toast container is going to be just that. It's just going to be a component. So the problem right now is that our application, it's inside container and everything is centered. So when I trigger this toast, the toast is going to show at the middle because everything is centered. But don't worry, we're going to fix it in a second. First, we, I want to make it work. Now, of course, make sure you put it, you put the toast container. Okay. So now what do we need to do? I'm going to close everything and I'm going to go to the initial. This is where we uh, use this set error. So we are not going to use this any longer. So I'm going to go comment this out and I'm going to go here and just comment this out. Okay. So the way that this works is that we still need to import the toast right here. So I'm going to go and import the toast. All right. So what do we want to do? We just want to uh, show a toast. And the way, again, this works is by calling that toast that you're importing at the top. And then you need to say, you know, you need to specify what is the nature of this toast. In this case, it's going to be an error. Now, the first argument is going to be the error message, which is going to be too long, bro, or something like that. And then you can pass some properties. I'm just going to use now, but you can pass many options. You can even create your own custom kind of a customized uh, toasts. And the way you access the position is by doing position. And then maybe I can do top and then left. Now, we're going to have two problems. Is that centered problem that we have and the stylings. So I'm going to go reload the application and I'm going to try to get that error toast. So if I do so, oh, right a mistake. Let's start over. I'm going to type a little bit more and I'm going to get the error and we get this. <laughs> so yeah, the problem is that we need to add the CSS first. So that's the first problem. So if I go to the app and do something like this, we are going to get something a little bit better, but still it's centered. And it's because the uh, container lives inside the container. So what we can do now is just a, just a dumb fix. I'm going to create an, a div that has no rules. It's just going to be a, a dumb div, right? Just a dumb div. And I'm going to go and put everything inside. So I'm going to go, just copy this, and I'm going to put everything inside the div. But now the container will not, the toast container, will not live inside the container, the main container. It's going to be outside. So let me just make this a little bit, you know, prettier. And there you go. So now this container is not going to mess with this container anymore. And there you go. We get a toast. And it took us 
five minutes. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Super simple. Let's try it again. I'm going to go there and do next. And there you go. So now, of course, you can go to the documentation of the toast. They give you a demo and a full documentation. So it's pretty much the same thing. But you can do a million things. You know, you have some other things you can do. You do delay, the type of transition. So you can make some changes. Of course, I'm not going to go in depth of this. But remember to go to check the documentation. It's because it's very good. Okay, so now what we gain is that every time we want to show an error, we don't have to build something like we did. We did like this with the set error. We don't need to bring a state. We just need to import the toast and call it. And this applies for all the components. If I want to go to the result and maybe show a toast, the only thing I need to do is just bring the toast and run the code. And I don't need to create any kind of a state. That's the benefit you get with toasts. You can run them whatever you want. So I'm going to go there and say, I don't know, uh, you know, there is your answer, something like that. And I'm going to go there and just pretty much do the same thing that we are doing here. And maybe I'm going to do, I don't know, bottom center just to do something different. So now if we go to the result, we are going to get something with success, which is going to be green. Okay, so I'm going to go move next, then move forward, and we get there's your answer. So now we can run whatever code we wish. And the other benefit of this is that we don't need to hard code the message just like we are doing right here at the bottom. We just can, you know, do a more dynamic kind of a message. All right, so this is done. The application is a done deal. The only thing left is going to be uh, deploying. So let's go to the next one and start deploying to search. Okay, so on this one, we need to do the deploying. And I'm going to use search because it's the easiest way of deploying a project. Now, of course, when you do a deploy, when you deploy a project, you don't put all of this content, including the node modules, on the server. You just don't put it on the hosting. What you do, you create a build, right? And that build, what it's going to be at the end of the day, is just a tiny HTML with a, maybe a couple of CSS and a couple of JavaScripts, because that's the, how the browser knows how to handle the information or whatever it is that you're doing right here with React. So there's, the browser has no idea how to handle all of this with, with Node. It just has, has no idea. That's why we need to create a build. And of course, this build will create an optimized version of your application, and uh, it's going to make it ready to be deployed. So uh, if you go to the scripts, we get the start, which is how we can run the development server, and then you get the build. So yeah. So what we need to do to create a build, it's npm run and then build. And I'm going to go and make this a little bit bigger. So there you go. So the build, again, will create this build, and it will create an optimized version of the application, and it will create a new directory. Notice that it says build right here. So all of these files, optimized files, it will put them inside of the build. So if I go to the build, you pretty much get a static application with the index HTML, with the icons, then you get the robots that uh, TXT, and then you get the JavaScripts and the CSS. So this is how it works. It's just a static application. Of course, it works on React, but still static application. So the JavaScript, of course, is going to be in junks and everything is going to be sipped and, you know, compressed. So it's going to be a much more, you know, useful application on the browser. So this is what we need to uh, to deploy to production, not this one. This is the development project, you know, the developer project. This one is the one that needs to go to production. Okay. So first of all, how can we do to put it on production, to put it on, on search? So if you go right here, it says npm install global search. So this is something that you will need to install right here. So I'm going to go and say npm install global and then search. So this is going to go and it will install search in our computer. It's going to take just a second. And once this is installed, what we need to do is we need to run the keyboard search. So this one will ask you for a login and a password. And I logged out so I can show you how this works. I'm going to go there and I'm going to say search. So search is going to say, all right, so welcome to search. You will need to enter your email and your password. 
If you don't have any, by entering the email and password, it will create an account for you. That's the idea. So my account is going to be this one. And then I'm going to go and enter the password. So of course, when you type the password, it will not show, you know, the, uh, right, the cursor moving. So don't freak out. So let me just put the password because I don't remember. This is kind of a testing account, a fake account. And it's going to go and do the login and then it will ask you, okay, so what do you want to put in production? And notice this is important. It's giving you the location to the project, then decider, which is the root directory. But this is not what we want to put on production. It's not the whole thing. It's just going to be the build. So we need to say build. This is going to go. It's going to give you a fake domain, of course, and then press enter. It's going to do the upload, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. And then we'll give you right here a domain. And if I go there and pay, copy paste, uh, it's going to, you're going to get the working application. And th this, that's how easy, you know, it works with search just, you know, to deploy application. At the end of the day, you can use GitHub, uh, GitHub pages if you want to use or Heroku or Digital Ocean or whatever it is that you want to use. But uh, this is just a nice place. It's free at the beginning. Of course, if you want more features, you will need to pay something, but it's just free and you can host a project and you can add your own custom domain of, of course, if you wish. So let's, you know, let's see if this works. So should I go, I'm gonna go next, I'm gonna go, maybe I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to start over. So we know that works. So we get the errors. All right. So I'm going to go and do something shorter and then decided we are going to get maybe call. And if we decide again, that works. And if I start over, we go back. So everything works and works on the server. Now, what happens if you make a change, right? You just, let me just make this, a, you know, just a little bit smaller. So when you make a change, you will need to redeploy the project to production, you know, to search in this case. So uh, if you go to the search documentation, let me just go here. They give you a, a nice video and, you know, how to use it. It's just, you know, fairly simple. Uh, they, you do have a documentation in how to add a custom domain, how, you know, how you can do everything. So it's, it's, it's an easy read, just an easy read. So, okay, so what do we need to do? I just need to make a change. Let's say that instead of uh, ask a question, you know, let's say ask a good question just to change something. I'm gonna go here. Let me, let me just make this a little bit smaller. There you go. So we're gonna go to initial and the text is gonna be ask a, a good question. So this is my change. So now this change lives on development, but not in production. So how can we, you know, redeploy? So remember that they give you the name of the domain. So the only thing you need to do, since you're logged in, of course, is doing search. Let me make this one bigger. Is search. And then it's paste and the name of the domain. Of course, I'm going to need to delete the HTTPS. And this one will go to your account. It will check that you already have something. And right now, it's failing on me. No such file directory. Okay, so I'm going to go here and do something like this because I made a mistake. So I'm going to go search and minus minus domain. <laughs> Sorry for that. I'm going to go press enter. And now it's going to go and tell you, okay, what do you want to put? Well, I want to put the build. Now, the thing is that right now, if I put the build, this build is the old version, not the new version. So instead of doing this first, we need to do the whole process again. npm run build is going to go create the build again. And then we, then we need to redeploy. So, you know, th there we go. So now we need to do the other thing. Search domain. It's going to ask us what we want to do. Well, we want to put the build. I'm going to press enter. It's going to take just a second. And it's done. So I'm going to go and notice we get the same domain. That's the whole point. If I reload the application, we get ask a good question. So that's it. So, okay. So everything, uh, everything we did, uh, is going to be on different branches right here. Notice that you can get the code for each different section. So remember 
you can get it from here. So, all right, so that's it. I hope you had a good time. You learned something. Remember, I do have a lot of courses. You know, I have a lot of courses in my account that you can feel free to check, to, to, to check. And, uh, and okay, and so see you on the next course.